right there have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. Down from 350 to uh, about 119 miles per hour. The WB-57 high altitude plane, and there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue deployments are located, so we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes, and as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to and splash down, crew nine back on Earth. Now, generally speaking, um, and, and there we do see crew nine, some happy waves, smiles all around back on Earth. 美国东部时间三月十八号下午五点五十七分左右。有四名宇航员乘坐 SpaceX 的龙飞船返回地球，包括了两位在国际太空站已经滞留了九个多月的宇航员。那这四位宇航员呢，分别是美国宇航员 Nick h a g u e 美国女宇航员 s u n Williams， 那么她就是在太空滞留了九个多月。另外还有一位同样也是滞留了九个多月的，就是 Butch Wilmore， 以及俄罗斯宇航员 Alexander g o r b u n o v 这一次的这个行动呢，非常的成功。啊，我全程看了这个直播，那么我觉得呢，有几个看点跟大家分享一下。那么首先第一个呢，就是我是这一次我是第一次看到 SpaceX 飞船的内部啊，让我惊艳到了，它里面的空间非常的宽敞，四名宇航员坐在里面呢，还不会显得很拥挤。SpaceX 的龙飞船里面呢，它的这些仪器设备看起来都非常的先进。你像中国的这个返回舱，因为它是一次性的，所以它相对来说里面的这些仪器设备会会比较简单。而龙飞船呢，它是可以反复使用的。然后第二点呢，就是呃，美国宇航员也好，俄罗斯的宇航员也好，他们的这个宇航服呢都非常的轻便啊、呃，感觉活动起来会比较自如，包括它的头盔啊都比较轻便。那么相比之下呢，中国的航天服还有这个头盔呢，会看上去会。厚重一些啊，我不要用笨重这个词，厚重一些。我觉得这方面呢，中国还需要加油。然后第三点呢，就是这一次的这个四名宇航员中呢，其中除了有三名美国宇航员，还有一名俄罗斯的宇航员。那么这个就值得说一说了，因为自从俄乌战争之后，以美国为主的西方国家几乎制裁了呃俄罗斯的各个领域，你甚至包括什么。像古典音乐家柴可夫斯基的作品啊，甚至俄罗斯的阿猫阿狗啊，都被西方制裁。但唯独在航天领域呢，这个美俄之间的合作呢，一直在继续没有中断啊，这个也是很有意思的一件事情。然后最后一个看点就是这一次的这个降落点呢，非常的精准。龙飞船在海面降落之后，我看了一下，大约两分钟，救援的快艇就已经赶到了。然后救援打捞的这个船只呢，大约在六分钟。左右就已经到达了距离这个降落点一两百米的这个开外啊，待命了，非常的精准啊。这个呃，总的来说呢，这个、呃、这一次的这个龙飞船带领四名宇航员降落的这个行动呢，我觉得是非常成功，而、呃、我觉得是非常的令我印象深刻 ，impressive。那么接下来呢，我会给大家分享一些整个的全过程的一些呃精彩画面，那么大家别走开。那么其中包括对这四名宇航员的简单介绍，尤其是对两名在太空滞留了九个多月的宇航员更详细的介绍，啊，整个的这个返航的过程，从他们离开太空站到穿越大气层，再到非返这个这个海面，在佛罗里达的附近的这个海面上坠落啊，以及这个救援船打捞宇航员出舱，整个过程啊，我都。The Crew Nine mission began a little differently than usual, since Butch Wilmore and Sunny Will Williams were already aboard the space station when Nick Hague and Alexander Gorbanov arrived in the Crew Nine spacecraft in September. Having arrived as the crew flight test crew for Starliner, Wilmore and Williams were fully incorporated into the space station's Expedition 72 team and began research and other work aboard the station along with the other crew members. Additionally, Williams commanded the orbiting laboratory for much of the expedition.
And after a successful liftoff and separation from Falcon 9, Nick and Alexander made a short flight on board Dragon to the International Space Station in September. Both veterans of long-duration station missions, both Williams and Wilmore, conducted spacewalks during their nine months in space. Sunny Williams is a mission specialist for Crew 9. This was her third visit to the space station. She originally launched aboard Boeing Starliner spacecraft and arrived at the space station on June 6th. And it looks like we are beginning to get some views inside the spacecraft um, overlooking the shoulders of the crew on board Dragon. We'll continue to bring you those views um, throughout the day and, and views throughout Splashdown um, this morning or this afternoon, rather. Uh, but to, to jump back into a little bit more about uh, Sunny, she became an Expedition 7172 crew member and she logged 286 days in space on this mission. But she actually has a total of 608 days in space. The second most time in space by a U.S. astronaut. Former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson ranks first for the U.S. with 675 days in space. She conducted two spacewalks and has completed nine over the course of her career for a total of 62 hours and six minutes of spacewalking time. She ranks fourth on the list of cumulative time spacewalking by a female astronaut. And she has flown on four different spacecraft types, including the Space Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, and now Dragon. Previously, she served on Expedition 14 and 15 in 2006 and 2007, and again, again with Expedition 32 and 33 in 2012. She's a retired U.S. Navy captain and is a proud graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore is also serving as a mission specialist today. This is his third space flight and, just like Sunny, logged 286 days in space. He conducted one spacewalk and completed five over the course of his career, earning him a total spacewalking time of 21 hours, two minutes. He's flown on four different spacecraft types throughout his career, the Space Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, and now Dragon. Previously, the Mount Juliet, Tennessee native served on STS-129 in 2009 and Expedition 41 and 42 from 2014 to 2015. Wilmore is also retired, uh, a retired captain in the U.S. Navy. Now, let's take a little bit of a closer look at Dragon. One of the great things about being close to the space station is that we can use space station cameras to look at Dragon. But now that Dragon is on its way home, we don't have those external cameras. So here's an animation of what the capsule looks like. We've got the pressurized section, the capsule on the top, and the trunk or the unpressurized section on the bottom. That's where those solar panels that we manufacture in-house are located, soaking up the energy from the sun and turning it into power for the capsule. Uh, at the very top of the capsule is the nose cone. That is where the Dracos, uh, the forward Dracos are located. That nose cone is currently open, not closed like we saw in that animation. Once we get through um, the, uh, the final maneuverings for uh, the re-entry phase, we will close uh, the, the nose cone capsule just before Dragon begins its atmospheric entry to protect that forward hatch there located um, along with those forward Dracos. Right there, have our first view of Dragon Freedom coming home to Earth. And that view is from the WB-57, which is one of NASA's high-altitude planes that is tracking. Um, now, because of the way that this uh, camera is configured, it does look like it is uh, dark, but it is indeed daytime, and you're beginning to see that plasma trail as uh, Dragon re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. All of that is expected. We are uh, anticipating an acquisition of signal around 2.51 p.m. Pacific time, so just minutes from now, and you may hear the core begin to hail out. Um, pretty incredible views of the Dragon spacecraft making its way home back to planet Earth with the Crew-9 astronauts on board. Once again, this view is coming from the WB-57 plane. That heat shield we can see doing magnificent work as it works to... Um, Freedom, SpaceX, comm check. Freedom is with you. 4.6 feet. Enjoying the ride. Copy that, Freedom. It does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to 
Uh, about 119 miles per hour, we can see. 15 kilometers, brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. And we are expecting drogue deployment at 2.53 p.m. Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew 9 inside Dragon Freedom. As it returns back to Earth, we are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high-altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate nominal. You can hear the crowd here. Visual on two healthy drogues. The crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Next freedom. Thousand. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Copy, was 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for Splashdown, located in the Gulf of America, um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And Splashdown, Crew 9, back on Earth. Splashdown. Good main release. Copy splashdown. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing what a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. Still intact as well as the panels that enclose where the drogue parachutes are located. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in the next few minutes. Freedom copies. 
And so what we did just here, there was communications that those hypergol checks uh, were complete. They didn't find any of that upon those checks. So we'll continue to move through the timeline. Next up is a process called rigging, uh, which you see happening right now on your screen. This is when a SpaceX recovery personnel actually works to um, lift the Dragon capsule out of the water and onto the recovery vessel. Wow, we got a cute little pod of dolphins. It wasn't just one or two. <laughs> Slowly but surely closing the distance there between, oh, dolphin cam back again. <laughs> uh, we, can, we can see uh, that the Dragon capsule and the recovery vessel, that distance is closing. Again, this is just one more step as we continue to work recovery operations for Dragon Freedom. Uh, you see some of those uh, ropes now uh, coming into view as well. You are just joining us. Crew 9 splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Butch Wilmore, Sonny Williams, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. They're now working through procedures uh, to hoist this, this spacecraft up onto the recovery vessel Megan. Of the water and onto our recovery vessel Megan. Freedom Great news there, letting us know that Dragon Freedom has been successfully recovered from the water's surface. If you've just joined us, we had an on-time splashdown at 5.57 p.m. Eastern Time, and we can now see that the uh, water recovery operations... Uh, now, generally speaking... Um, and and there we do see Crew 9, some happy waves, smiles all around back on Earth. We can see folks on board clapping as our first crew member. And that is NASA astronaut Nick Haig, commander of Crew 9. Now out of Crew Dragon Freedom. Once again, big smile. <laughs> She, like her other crew members, now uh, will be assisted onto the mobility aid. And there we have it, some waves, some thumbs up, and some smiles. We're getting some views of him now as he egresses or exits the spacecraft. Once again, some 